Will a time trial or triathlon bike really make you that much faster? Well, we all know the claims. It is thought that the triathlon bike is the fastest option. It's the most aerodynamic. But let's be frank, very often they are heavier. They may not handle quite as well and they're less versatile. Now we have challenged the triathlon bike on numerous occasions before with the good old road bike, but this time we are upping the game. We're bringing in the road bikes, more aero sibling. That's right, we are pitting the triathlon bike up against the aero road bike. So let's take a look at our competitors for today's battle. On one side, I've got the Felt AR Aero Road Bike. It is your typical road bike setup with road bike geometry, drop handlebars, etc. but with a big focus on aerodynamics. And you can see that with the tube profiles, yet still being UCI legal. And all in all, weighs in an impressive 8.3 kilograms. Now, the main reason behind comparing these two bikes today, other than for you guys to enjoy watching me suffer, is that a triathlon bike is a triathlon bike. It has been designed primarily to do one thing well, and that is to be ridden fast in the aero bars within a triathlon or a time trial. Now, of course, it can be used for many other things, but let's be honest, that is where a road bike tends to be better placed. A road bike has been designed to be ridden well in groups, climbing, descending, cornering, aggressive crit racing, cafe rides. The list goes on, and that is where the big question often arises. It's often thought that you either have to own two bikes, a road bike and a triathlon bike, or you have one bike and you compromise between race day, speed, and training day functionality. Now, many of you likely already have a road bike, but perhaps you're looking to upgrade and maybe get a triathlon bike, or maybe your budget only allows to get one bike. So which do you choose, travel bike or road bike? Well, that is where I'm hoping to step in today, help out and answer some of the most common questions, as well as put the two bikes up against each other over a couple of different routes and terrains. Okay, so before we put these bikes through their paces, let's look at a couple of fundamental differences. The triathlon bike has a far steeper seat tube, in this case around 79 degrees, which allows you more comfortably to lean forwards and use the aero bars. That in turn helps to reduce your frontal area, make you, the rider, more aerodynamic and therefore faster. Due to this geometry though, it does mean that your weight as a rider can be a little more over the front end. That can make the bike's handling a little more difficult particularly on descents. And the tubing is big for a reason. That's so that the air flowing over the frame sticks to the frame and flows more smoothly for longer, therefore reducing drag. And whilst technically that makes it faster in crosswinds due to a sail effect, it can make it a little uneasy for everyday riding if you're experiencing strong sidewinds. And this extra material obviously adds weight, which might be felt on steep climbs, but also might make the bike feel a little less responsive and agile. Whereas the aero road bike has a seat tube angle of around 73 to 74 degrees. It may not sound like much, but that's enough to make the position feel far more relaxed, of course, in addition to a few other geometry changes. And whilst the tubing is larger on an aero road bike than a standard road bike, I think you'll agree, it's nothing compared to the triathlon bike, therefore making it quite a versatile bike. But that's enough of that. Of course, you're here to see them being cycled fast. So time to bring in our very able cyclist, Sam, the machine picter. Oh, what do you mean he's gone for lunch? Ah, I'll have to give it my best shot then. Okay, so what better place to start than with a straight up flat TT. For this particular battle, I'm actually going to hold the same power for both runs, 300 watts. That way we can see how their aerodynamics stand up against each other by comparing their average speeds and the times that they produce for the same effort. And I'm going to be doing that over a four kilometer course, which is nice and flat from point to point. All right, serious stuff now. I've got the business helmet out. Let's have some fun. Beep, beep, beep.
Okay, round two, area road bike time. Ready? Beep, 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 beep. Not a total surprise there. The TT bike, triathlon bike was 15 seconds quicker than the aero road bike, which is actually closer than I expected it to be. And don't worry, I'm sure some of you are screaming at the screen right now. It's all right, I've thought about it already. I've got some clip-on aero bars on the aero road bike now. So one more test on this bike. Now a bit of advice to you, if you are adding aero clip-on bars to a road bike, it's just to raise the height of the saddle a touch and bring the saddle forward a little bit. And that will just help you get a little bit more comfortable in the aero bars. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, some good news, the clip-on aero bars on the aero road bike were quicker than without. Um, they were still around 10 seconds slower than the triathlon or TTT bike, although far more sustainable holding that position than on the aero road bike without, which is why obviously so many of us opt for it and obviously it's quicker, so why not? Um, now, quick bit of maths though, to compare the difference between the triathlon bike and the aero road bike with the clip-on bars would make it around four and a half minutes difference over a 70.3 and around nine minutes over an Ironman. Obviously that's a bit rough and ready, but it does show the benefit of the triathlon bike. But obviously that's just on the flat. So now let's go and find a climb and see if this weight difference and the agility, the responsiveness of this road bike makes a difference. All right, next up, it's got to be the hill climb, hasn't it? Now, aerodynamics, climbing, and weight is a huge topic in itself. Unfortunately, we do have a video on that already. So if you want to learn a little bit more on this and go into some depth and detail, then do head on over and watch that video after this one. But in short, aerodynamics becomes less of a factor at speeds under 15 kilometers an hour. Now for an elite good cyclist, that tends to be at gradients of around seven and a half percent. But for most everyday amateur cyclists, that's typically around four and a half percent. So I have picked a suitably hard climb today. It's just shy of a kilometer long and an average gradient of seven and a half percent, but it does kick up to over 20% on a couple of occasions. And I'm gonna have some fun on this one because I'm gonna go all out on these efforts. And you'll be interested to know, I have left the clip on aero bars on the road bike purely because, well, that's probably the setup that most of you will go for. Despite it adding weight, it only seems fair. Right. Let's give this one a go. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. Here we come. Beep, 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 beep. That is one tough climb. I've got to say the times were actually a lot closer than I was expecting. Now I went 243 on the triathlon TT bike, whereas I went 240 
on the road bike, which may not sound like much, but I mean, that is certainly something to separate the two bikes. And it definitely felt a lot different. On the road bike, it just felt far more agile and responsive. I could just throw that bike around when I was out of the saddle. Whereas on the triathlon bike, it just feels a little bit more cumbersome. It's a little harder to kind of throw from side to side. And that's coming from someone that spent years, hours and hours riding a triathlon bike in the mountains, climbing and descending. For someone that may not be quite as used to a triathlon bike, you may actually see that gap in that time being even bigger. Now for our final challenge, a technical challenge. Now I've planned out a short but technical route. We've got a little bit of everything in there. We've got flats, climbs, descents, corners, you name it, something to test them both. the weather really started to turn towards the end there. So I'm back inside, I've showered, I'm warm, and I thought I'd start by giving a little bit of a summary of what I've been up to just there. So for the flat TT, the triathlon bike was obviously quicker than the aero road bike. Now, I was actually really impressed by how quick the aero road bike was, although it was still a sizable amount off the triathlon bike. I would argue though, the position I was holding on that aero road bike was quite aero and it was really quite uncomfortable. I definitely couldn't hold that for anywhere near the amount of time I could on the triathlon bike. That was far more comfortable on that bike. Now having the clip on aero bars on that aero road bike did help to bridge the gap somewhat, but it's still a long way off the triathlon bike. But then on to the climb. Now the aero road bike was actually quicker, but only marginally, a very small amount. And again, I'd argue how much climbing and for how long do you climb in most triathlon courses? Unless, of course, you're doing an extreme race, something like outdoors triathlon. And then for the technical section, while well, the aero bike was quicker again, but only marginally. And again, I would argue how much technical features are there in most triathlon courses? Yep, yeah, okay, you might lose a little bit on a triathlon bike through some twists and turns and small descents. But I'd say that those flat sections, the gains that you're making on those with the triathlon bike far outweigh those small hill climbs and technical bits elsewhere. So back to the original question, which should you choose? Well, I really think it comes down to your personal needs. Now, if you aren't financially restrained and budget isn't an issue, then I would certainly recommend a triathlon bike. They are super fun, they're super fast, but they also come with a ton of integration for storage, hydration, which is a big bonus. It's also worth pointing out that the faster you are, the faster you go, then the more aerodynamics come into play. So if you are looking to be competitive or win things, or maybe just get on a podium, then a triathlon bike is certainly gonna help you without a doubt. Now, alternatively, if you are looking to save a little bit of money or perhaps you're new to the sport and you just want to try things out first, then an aero road bike with aero clip-ons is a very, very good option. And as I've shown, it's really not a million, million miles off a triathlon bike and the speeds you can get there. Now, another bit to throw in here, if you're actually put off of a triathlon bike due to the position and comfort and how aggressive it might look, well, I'm gonna argue again here, and I've been arguing a lot today, but actually trying to get comfortable on a road bike with clip-ons is far more difficult than trying to get comfortable on a triathlon bike that has been designed to be used with aero bars there's an interesting one to leave you with. Well, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to give us a follow over on social media and give us a subscribe just down below.